Hi everyone, this is Ian, and welcome to the second update of the creation process for the Blender Game Engine Animated Logo. In this update, I'm going to show you the stage that I'm currently at right now, setting up the 3D scene. Now, um, I'm afraid I can't really show uh, a whole lot uh, in terms of what I have in the in the blend file, mainly because mainly because it is very memory intensive. But whatever, I'm going to try my best. So just bear with me. So in terms of setting up the scene, this is what I have so far. So this is what it looks like in the camera, and this is what the actual scene looks like uh, itself. So basically what I have, um, now actually, before I start explaining the scene, I want to um, tell you uh, the animation that uh, I had in mind when coming up with this logo. So I have no uh, storyboards to uh, put up here, but I'm going to try my best to explain this. So basically how I want this logo to start is first we start off with a dark black dark black room with pretty much little to no lighting. Then we have the camera slowly zooming into the very wall uh, at the front of a room, of which you can see the Blender logo right here. Then it eventually slows down, comes to a stop, and these two antennas here, which I modeled myself, start to um. Uh, start up and basically create um create sparks and those sparks are going to shoot directly from the antennas to the center of the wall here and those sparks those series of sparks will um basically um, um basically create the outline of the logo itself for the uh for the official Blender logo. So the Blender logo itself is going to be revealed first. So after those lightning bolts, yeah, uh, after those lightning bolts create the outline of every single element in the Blender logo, not including the game engine text, we then see a big bright light. And that big bright light basically forms the completed Blender logo um, with the right colors and the, um, yeah, with the right card colors pretty much. Then everything, everything else, fades out, this includes the room, the antenna, and all that. Um, the Blender logo stays on screen, and I wonder if I could do this. Um, yeah, I can. And then, um, and then, after everything fades out, the Blender logo slowly zooms up towards the, towards the screen right here, to the center of the screen, and then this game engine text right here just basically gets drawn out by a second, um, by a secondary laser, and um, that laser is gonna write out the game engine text down here, and and that pretty much form that pretty much forms our uh, the final logo, which is Blender Game Engine. So, uh, so yeah, I, I mean it could be easier explain with uh, images, but I don't really have any right now. But I hope you get the gist of um what I have in mind for this logo. So. Anyway, um, now that I now that you pretty much know uh, how what I want to be created with this logo, let's go over the scene that I just created. So again, this is the scene that I um that I uh, that I'm gonna be working with during the animation process. And what this scene consists of is we start off first with a floor and a wall right here. Oops. And um, basically all it is, um, I just I just took uh. I took two planes right here, and I set one of them as the wall, and um, set one of them as the floor. They're the exact same size, so they have the same dimensions. And um, and well, in terms of texturing of the uh, the wall and the floor, uh, for the floor, um, uh, actually, I'll I'll show you. So basically, um, the texturing for this three D scene, which you can see in the background, are basically pretty much these three textures right here. So Basically, what I have here is a rust texture, and that's gonna be for the um the um the uh, antennas right here. They're gonna be a little bit rusty in the scene. Then we're gonna fall, and then we're gonna follow with um uh some cracks, which are gonna be used for the back wall to show that the wall itself has some wear and tear, and and the concrete textures are going to be the floor. Like this logo is going to take place on a concrete floor against a um a cracked wall. So um basically uh, I got all these text I got these three textures from um from CG textures, and you can find a whole lot more different types of textures 
Um, uh, but yeah, these are what I have so far is I have a rust texture, a crack texture, and a concrete texture. Now for some of these textures, and by some I mean the concrete and the crack texture, there's more than one texture. So, so, um, so there, so these basically, these, um, the floor and the wall can basically be set up with either of these textures. There are three main textures for the, uh, the cracks. Um, so first we have this one, which is, uh, sort of our rectangular shape right here. Then we got this one right here. And I think the one I went went with is the third one, which um which looks like this. And um as for the concrete, uh I have this one, which um is the square one, and I also have this one, but I uh made my final decision on this one. So th the reason why I went th with this one is because the floor is um the um well the incision in the concrete is uh not too deep, so that way. Uh, like compared to the first image and the second one, the in, in the inner the incent intersections or whatever, um, there the cracks are not too deep in in the image right here. And in addition to all these textures, I also have um I also have generated some um some bump mapping bump maps or whatever for each of these textures. I have here a so right here um let me actually use the one that I use. So over here, I have a diffuse texture, which is a kind of a, uh, which I assume is a color corrected version of the uh, of the original. Then I also have a height map to generate um to generate the geometry and the three D scene, and I also have a bump map for this, or actually a normal map actually, so that way um so that way it doesn't really look as if I just basically placed a picture onto a plane or stuff like that, or onto a plane or stuff like that. And I also have the specularity map. Now I, now I will admit, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have to, I did not use this texture, but maybe when you, I release these textures, you'll probably think, you know, maybe it'll be better with some specularity in there. So you could just throw that in there. I'll, I, I'll still provide this when I, uh, uh, release the files, so. Yeah, so basically these are all the textures that I use for the uh the the wall and the uh the floor. Now, um in terms of uh how I generated the uh geometry, I just basically selected it and what I did here, if I go into edit mode, you'll see that I subdivided this plane in uh a multiple times. I think I subdivided by six by value of sixty. So basically I put in a whole lot of um a whole lot of subdivision into the original. And what I did is I added a um as in addition to a subsurface modifier with um with three subdivisions, I also added a um a displacement a displace modifier. And the texture um and the texture for this display placement modifier is basically the um the height map of the uh of the concrete texture, which I just mentioned before. And um and I set it to a strength at point six six uh, I mean point zero zero six because if I set it up too high, it's gonna look really, really, really spiky. So that's the reason why um this file is so memory intensive because it has a lot of um a lot of data to deal with in terms of um vertices and polygons in the um in the models. And I also did the exact same thing with the um the wall here. I also added a displacement um modifier but this time um i worked with a strength of 0 0.005 so um yeah it's uh it's a little less strong than the uh, bottom one but for me it just works that way so yeah <coughs> excuse me and um well the world all i did was just use the black background even though in the final render you won't be able to see it right here so um yeah and um now as for these un antennas uh basically uh I created I created these antennas I will say that I created them using using a modifier known as the um the wireframe modifier so I just basically used that and I actually created one using the uh the wireframe modifier and um and basically I adjusted the um 
I, I, I don't know. I adjusted it so, um, you know, it looks like this. But I also applied it, so that way you can't, that's why you can't see the modifier, because all I had, did was click apply, and it was applied to the, um, the object as a whole. So, basically, once, um, once I applied that modifier, um, the modifier is fixed. Even when I go into edit mode right here, it's still fixed right here. And I also added a, uh, displacement modifier. I was originally gonna put a subdivision surface modifier, but it made the model look weird, um, look weird, I think. And also, it again provided too much memory. So, like, I tried doing this and my computer crashed. So, I decided, you know, I'm just going to take that out and I don't want people to go through the same problem that I did. So, I created that. And then, I, um, the top of the antenna, the top of the antenna is actually, um, a sphere with, again, with this, with a subdivision surface modifier and a displacement modifier. And, um, I'm using the rust texture for this because, oh yeah, that's another texture. So let me, uh, select this. Let me select the, the bottom of the antenna. And, um, actually, um, I will say that, um, this sphere is, um, is, a, um, basically, is basically the bottom antenna, uh, the child of this bottom antenna. And, um, the antenna is this, um, this sphere's, uh, parent so i so using my knowledge of a uh, parenting i was able to parent the sphere to the bottom of the antenna so yeah so anyway uh i'll get back to that and actually i did forget to show this uh so i'll select the floor and i'll go into the material panel and you can see this is the uh material for the um for the floor right here, so this is basically what it looks like, and I also give it a, uh, actually let me, uh, split a window and go to a node editor, and, um, if I go into, f uh, go into full view, you can see that in addition to the, um, uh, to the, uh, uh, to and applying the texture, I also gave it the fuse texture, uh, a little bit of color correction, making it look a little green. Because I wanted the um the logo animation itself to have a green tint to it, to make it look I don't know, just a little spooky or something like that. So I added this um this color correction um note in here, the, the RGB curves one to be exact, and thus getting the final result. So so I mean, let me uh just uh actually you know what. Sure, why not? So this is what it looks like without the filter. So you see that uh, it turned, uh, it doesn't turn green, but if I go ahead and reattach everything, you can see that green tint update. So, yep, that's, uh, that's in there. So now if we go to the, the back wall right here, so this is what the texture looks like. It's again great, given a green tint, like the floor right here. And as you can see, if I go over here, I did forget to mention this. I also added the, um, the bump mapping and stuff like that. And so, yeah. And the texture for the, um, the antenna, as soon as it gets selected, there we go. Uh, this is the, um, the texture for the, uh, the metal. And, um, and it, of course, it, it too was, uh, color corrected, the diffuse texture. It was color corrected with both of brightness and bright, brightness and contrast node and an RGB curve node. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Got the seeds there. Anyway. And, um, uh, and as for, as for this texture, the rust texture, um, I don't think this is quite final yet. Um, I'll probably tweak on it more as I continue animated, animating the, um, the animation, but, you know, whatever. So this is where I'm currently at right now. You see the good. Jeez. Getting really sneezy today. Or whatever. All right. Anyway. So anyway, this is the uh the rust texture. And it's also applied to um the top of the antenna or the sphere. So it's pretty much exactly the same as before. But this time, this time if we go in here. Oh man. What is wrong with me? I'm sneezing all over the place. Excuse me. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> um, you can see that um, in comparison to the bottom of the antenna, I also added a mix shader, and I mixed um the original, the original um uh, rust texture, and I mixed it together 
with a diffuse color of um like a sort of a a bluish color to it. And um I also am I also made sure that the the image textures had non-color data uh for each of these. That so that's both for the um the uh the, the diffuse map and the uh the normal map. And also for for each of these, uh also I also added an emission shade an emission shader which will come in later. Um, it's not applied right now, but I have a feeling that this will be used later. So let me get out of that. And so once I uh, created this antenna, I basically duplicated it. Oh, I duplicated it and I placed it over here and I rotated each of these slightly so that way um, they're at a distance. And so, yeah, excuse me. But this is what the texture for the sphere... Oh. This is what the texture for the sphere looks like over here. And so, yeah. So here I'm going to talk about the um, the texturing and the UV unwrapping for each of the elements that are in this scene right here. So first I'll start with the, um, the floor and the wall. So I'll select the floor. And if I go, if I go into edit mode right here, if I go into edit mode, um, uh, you can see that first this is the wrong texture. But if I switch this to... Um, which is it? Uh, it's gotta be somewhere. Uh, uh, concrete floor. I think this is the right. Nope. Is it this one? Okay. If I switch it to um. Uh, to uh concrete uh, to this one right here, you can see that um, I think it's kind of squished right here, and uh, I also had to uh rotate it in this way. Like, I'm not sure if this was a squish before, but, uh, yeah, but I had to rotate the scene because I wanted the lines uh, shown on the concrete floor to go forwards instead of sideways, so, so yeah, I rotated the, um, the, the unwrap right here, and, yep, and so if I, so now if I select the wall, go into edit mode right here, and if I switch that to the, um, where is it, uh, to the nope, not the concrete. Uh, to the cracks, to the cracks material. You could see that um, I scaled it up and kind of shifted. And the reason why I did that, I scaled it up and uh, shifted it downwards because I didn't want a repeat or or pattern of the texture in the final render. Because when I originally uh did a normal UV unwrap, uh, I could see that the uh the pattern was uh, repeating in the background. So I just took the UV unwrap. Scaled it up and repositioned it so that way uh, the cracks seem to look natural. And also, I don't want the uh, the cracks to seem too big against the wall. So, so that's what I did here. And now let's go to the um to the uh, the antennas. So first, let's try the top of the antennas. So uh, basically, what I did, which is a sphere, and if I go into edit mode here. And if I switch the texture to this one, you can see that the image is a little bit too wide. And for the UV unwrap, uh, I will say it's kind of going to make the image just a little bit distorted. I don't really know. I mean, I don't know what the heck will happen in the final render, but whatever. Uh, so it basically just be, hit U and just did a simple sphere project, project, projection. However, since I'm uh, releasing these files, maybe someone could come up with a better UV unwrap than I. I am, since I'm releasing this, you can actually, if you want to, you could take this UV unwrap and actually make it a little bit better and not make it look seem uh, distorted or anything like that. But yeah, this is where I'm currently at right now. And finally, the uh, the bottom of the antenna, or the main uh, antenna structure. This is the most uh, complex to, uh, to unwrap and texture. Because, well, if I go into edit mode right here, there's a whole lot of stuff here that... Um, that make up this, uh, this one model. You can see there's a whole lot of vertices, probably eight... 86,308 to be exact, as well as a lot of edges and faces and stuff like that, so it was really complex to to UV unwrap it, so, so uh, uh, basically all I did here was uh, did a smart UV proje projection, and this was the result I got, and now again, this texture is going to be uh, a little bit uh, distorted when it, um, when it comes time to render, however, since the scene's going to be a little bit dark in it and you can barely even see that. I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem and even it is since I'm putting these files up online 
Uh, people can actually tweak these and make the logo better, I presume, but whatever. This is a... Uh, so yeah, this is currently what the texture looks like for the antenna, and yeah. And for the Blender logo, um, I'm pretty sure you can tell already, but it's uh, 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 attached to the back of the wall. And I will say something about this. Uh, as for the Blender logo, um, I made all the elements of the Blender logo, which in this case is the, um, the eye, the center of the eye, the Blender text, and the trademark symbol. I made them all children of this... Um, of the back layer of the Blender socket logo. So if I were to move the Blender socket, uh, it would stick to the, um, yeah, to the, uh, yeah. And, um, and another thing that I did with his game engine text, uh, when I, if I select the G and the A right over here, and if I hit G, oh, wait, that's not it. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I remember. If I selected the, um, the curves, or in this case, the rest of the text down here, which I made with the curves, um, you could see that, uh, the G and the A are all children of the, um, of the curves down here. So if I were to move that, uh, they would move along with it. And, but if I were to select the G and the A, you could see that if I move them, they move, um, on their own. And again, but if I select the curves and move them, the G and the A will move um, in relation to the um, the curves. So, yeah. And, uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. And, uh, let me uh, reconnect this. And finally, over here, I have a, um, I have a uh, spotlight lamp. So, and what I did, and let me take, show you the properties of this, uh, this spotlight lamp right here. Currently, it has a size of 0.5, and I'll give you a little test preview render so that way you can actually see um, what the scene looks like uh, if it was rendered on its own. And it has a strength value of 5,500, so it's a, uh, it, yep, and its size is 27.2. So basically what it's going to do, and it's, it has, oh, um, it has a blend value of 1, so... So if I were to render this right now, um, I will do it later, by the way. Um, when I render this now, it'll basically show um, a, a spotlight, and it will fade into the, uh, the, back, into the wall, the, the edge of the wall, I mean, the face of the wall, or whatever. So that's that. Uh, let me just select the camera again. And um, so basically, this is the main animation scene. Right over here. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch the scene to this one here, which I called Powered By. Remember how I said this logo is going to get two variations? Well, in order to create the Powered By variant, um, basically this was a whole lot easier than creating the scene that you just saw. All I did was just imported the just some basic text and entered it, as, entered it in as Powered By, and I gave it a basic white material. And this scene includes uh, ambient occlusion, but it also has a transparent background because what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotoscope, uh, I think that's what you, the term is, rotoscope this text onto the final animation for the second variant. And so, yeah. So now um, let me go ahead and switch to the video sequence editor. You can see right now this, this scene has changed to... Um, to sequence and this is where I'm going to be editing the um the video sequence of the animation so I made one scene just for that and that seems to be pretty much it uh for the uh, blender logo so let me just uh give this a um uh a, a test render so I'm going to switch the viewport mode to rendered now it's going to take some time to uh to boot up because there's a again there's a whole lot of data that um that needs to be um that needs to be calculated because there um there's polygon information mesh uh mesh data um lighting data and stuff like that so it's a really complex scene and it's very memory uh inducive so we're gonna go ahead and let uh, we're gonna let blender do its thing and coming up yep you see up here at the text you see it's it says updating mesh and it's building uh the stuff right here so basically this is where uh, if I were to render this out right now, this is where I'm at right now. So we can see that the light again, this light, if I were to select the light, maybe I could do it without making a crash. 
there we go. If we select the light, and if we go over to the properties for the light, you can see that I've given it just a, just a little green tint to it. Because, again, I wanted to have that, uh, that green tint feel to it. And, um, like I said, there's little to no lights in this scene because, well, the only light that I have in this scene is, of course, the spotlight. And some of the light is going to be, um, is going to be produced by the top of these antennas because remember the, um, the emission shader I talked about with these, um, with the tops of these antennas? Uh, if once I start animating, um, you're going to see, um, that the tops are going to provide light when, um, the, uh, the lightning or the spark animation gets provided. So again, the camera zooms in to this scene, then the tops of the antennas uh, basically produce sparks, and those lightning sparks or whatever basically sort of draw out the um, the logo itself. There's going to be like multiple sparks coming from here. One's going to draw the background, the other one's going to draw the eye, the center of the eye, the other one's going to write blender, and I think the trademark symbol is going to fade in on its own. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it will. I don't know. And once that is done, there's a bright flash and the Blender logo, the official Blender logo, I think, uh, yeah, the Blender logo is going to appear, the rest of the scene is going to fade out, the Blender logo is going to zoom in, and a laser uh, basically uh, forms the game engine text down here. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're getting performance issues, so yeah, I'll switch back to that in a minute. So anyway, that's pretty much where I'm at at the scene right now, and I think that's pretty much it for now. So this is basically where I'm at right now. I'm at the uh, the scene construction portion, and um, so basically, um, so basically, I'm now going to um, uh, do the animation portion of this logo. I'm going to go ahead and pretty much animate everything. I'm going to animate the camera, going to animate the lights, going to animate uh, the outline, the lightning, and stuff like that. And once I'm done, I'm going to come back with my next update, which is the animation portion of the logo creation process. So, so I guess that's pretty much it for me. My name is Ian, aka The Blender Bro, and I'll see you guys later in the next update. Keep on blending, bro!